In the last segment, we saw how the people of Econoland dealt with a situation when the economy moved into a recessionary gap and then moved out of it back to the full employment long-run equilibrium level. Is it possible to produce past capacity? What about the other side of the business cycle? Well, to see how this would work, suppose now that the economy is producing, the level of real GDP is at the long-run full employment level of output. This time, suppose there's a sudden and unexpected spike and shock to spending. That is, maybe one of the components of aggregate demand, like consumption or business investment, even government spending, has increased. As such, there's going to be pressure for price levels to rise. And as this is occurring, nominal wages, which are fixed perhaps in the short run, leave a situation where workers have lower real wages. This signals to firms lower production costs, and they can expand past the full employment level. Workers are unaware of this situation initially, as more people are brought on, we can show this tale using our aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph. The increased spending levels, either from the government, consumption, or business investment, leads to an increase in the aggregate demand. As firms are trying to expand, they can do so at lower real wages from workers. This enables total output in the economy to increase past this full employment level, with pressure on prices to rise. Moreover, this is the other side of the business cycle. The economy is heating up. Economists would say we are in an inflationary gap. In fact, that also can be shown on our aggregate demand aggregate supply model, as the distance between the current level of real output and the capacity full employment level RY1. This is called an inflationary gap because now we're in a situation where there's even further pressures for price levels to rise as the economy is producing past its full employment level. So now at the top of the business cycle, we are in a situation where the level of unemployment is actually lower than the natural rate. We are producing past capacity. How would the economy respond here? Well, if we look at the two schools of thought, we will show how, what their thinking and what their logic is as to how the economy returns back to its capacity. Let's start with the classical economists. The classical economists are going to point to the fact that markets across the board, including labor markets, tend to adjust on their own. Now, since unemployment rates are lower, there's a shortage in the labor market. It is harder for firms to find workers, and so there's pressure for nominal wages to rise. As these wages rise, firms cut back. Firms produce less than before, and overall, the economy will produce less, actually closer back to its long-run capacity. Let's show the adjustment using our aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. The classical economists are going to point out that as unemployment rates are lower, there's a shortage in the labor market, and so there are pressure for wages to rise. As these nominal wages do rise, the short-run aggregate supply curve is going to shift back to the left, leaving us and leaving the people of Econoland at a level of real output that's consistent with the long-run capacity, only now at a higher price level as wages have continued to rise. So the classical economists would point out that as markets adjust on their own, as labor markets adjust on their own, to a heated economy, to a situation where unemployment rates are lower, a rise in nominal wages, a rise in wages in response to a shortage in the labor market, would lead the economy to produce back towards its level of real GDP that is consistent with the long run, now only at a higher price level. This also shows that the classical economists would point out that the long run aggregate supply curve is more in line with their views of what aggregate supply in the economy looks like in general. We can't really produce past this level over a longer period of time, and price levels are just going to adjust in conjunction with the level of productive resources in the economy. On the other hand, Keynesians believe in the ability of institutions to help manage and fine-tune the economy. 
They would stress that the use of the government or the central bank can be useful measures to bring the economy back towards its full employment rates, to bring the economy back to a level that's consistent with our capacity, but their point of view will allow us to do so at lower price levels. Here's how the story would work. The Keynesian would say that we could use contractionary fiscal policy or contractionary monetary policy to reduce overall spending in the economy. The use of contractionary fiscal policy would be a reduction in government spending or an increase in taxes, both of which will reduce deficit spending. These would lead to lower spending overall in the economy and bring, the, bring us back and bring the people back of Econoland towards its full employment levels. Moreover, the use of the central bank could also be an important tool. In this case, the central bank could this time lower the money supply, which would raise interest rates as banks have fewer reserves in the system. With higher interest rates, this would induce both individuals, firms, who are, might be sensitive to higher interest rates, to cut back on their spending. All of this would lead to a situation where the overall level of real output is going to get cut back out of this inflationary gap and reduce the pressures that are heating up the economy. We can show this story using our aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph. Keynesian would argue that the use of contractionary fiscal or contractionary monetary policy, a reduction in government spending or an increase in taxes, both of which would reduce the budget deficit. Contractionary monetary policy would be a reduction in the money supply which would lead to higher interest rates. To the extent that businesses and individuals are sensitive to higher interest rates, both consumption and business investment spending would fall. Note that these are components of overall aggregate demand. Consumption and investment through the use of contractionary monetary policy, a cut in government spending, or a raise of an increase in taxes that would lead businesses and individuals to cut spending, all of which would make the aggregate demand curve shift to the left. Note here that the economy is going to produce closer and back to its full employment level of output, only this time there's been a reduction in uh, pressures on prices to go up as price levels have fallen. So in conclusion, the top of the business cycle, or when the people of Econoland are experiencing an inflationary gap, this can be solved, or this can change, and this can return back to full employment through two measures. A hands-off approach that classical economists often point to is going to lead to an increase in nominal wages, and firms would cut production with higher production costs. The short-run aggregate supply curve would shift back to the left. On the other hand, a Keynesian who would argue for the ability of institutions to manage and fine-tune the economy would suggest using contractionary fiscal policy or contractionary monetary policy, all of which would lead to a reduction in spending. This would shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, and it would bring the level of output closer to the ability of the economy to produce in the long run, only at lower price levels. Now it's going to be your turn to practice with these ideas and how an economy can deal with a situation where the, it is heating up and we're in an inflationary gap.